most men will never experience unconditional love. The way things are set up is that for a man to experience any love, it's under conditions. It's conditional. Um, And before I even move forward, let me just explain for the people who like to, you know, who can uh, be objective. When I say never, I mean, I don't actually, I don't actually mean never. I don't actually mean that it can never happen because that's obviously inherently wrong. If I say something never can happen because there's always a possibility for things to occur. What I'm saying is that majority of the time, most men will never experience unconditional love. Their love is usually based on something, based on what you can provide, whether it's emotional whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical or monetarily, what can you provide to get love, you know? And even when you do receive that love, it's very rarely unconditional because whatever you're providing, if for whatever reason that stopped, that love's going to eventually stop as well. What that does, it sets up a toxic environment. What that does, it sets up an environment to where people are stuck to their jobs. The reason why I'm saying stuck is because there's a saying that in order for your soul to be able to transcend, it has to be light as a feather. But if you are bogged down with worry and regret and frustration. There's a law called um, use it or lose it. If you've never really experienced unconditional love or let me break it down even further. Love based off of who you are. Not what you do. So if who you are is never being nourished with love, then who you are starts to atrophy and what you do prevails. What you do is not who you are. So that means that, as we know, the ego moves from what you do. The role you play is your ego. So then now in America. Where big corporations rule. This system, this environment is advantageous because now you're stuck to a corporation. If you never experience true love. You see where I went with that. Everything is a circle. Um, Zorba is a philosopher. He says everything is related. Everything is a circle, you know. And as we know, using comedic knowledge as above, so below, everything is intertwined. Everyone is intertwined. So for these big corporations in America, as I like to call it, the home of the narcissist, in order to create more narcissists or narcissistic behaviors you have to now destroy the soul and what happens is that these men whether they realize it consciously or subconsciously they're never being nourished and it also what's happening is that they are growing resentful you know, um, one of the harshest realities that a man can come to terms with or has to come to terms with if he's going to be able to emancipate himself or to liberate himself is to know that there's a good chance that he may never receive unconditional love and all his 
Love is conditional based off of, you know, what he can provide, you know, and then also realize that most women and if he does provide that conditional love. So say if you pay in the play, chances are that that person won't respect you or cannot love you because what you're doing is you're putting a price point on their love. So now you're now devaluing their soul and their love by putting a price on it, but they're putting a price on it and society has put a price on it. So now what that does is make their love cheaper and it devalues it in their mind while simultaneously devaluing your love as a man in your mind or subconscious mind. It's deep shit, ain't it? So it's a lose lose that is set up. So now what happens is that in that woman's mind, if she feels you got to pay to play, if she feels that you have to provide something in order to receive her love. That means that what are you buying? What are you paying? And where is that coming from? It's coming from, again, corporations. So now that also benefits the corporations while simultaneously. It creates a void, creates a vacuum. Because being spiritual beings and if you never receive spiritual nourishment and you replace that spiritual nourishment with tangible things it can never be satiated and filled so it's like a quick hit so now what you do is relate now what you do is relegate a spiritual being into a chemical being when I say chemical, meaning that you're having that person operate in their lower self, in their animal self or their physical self. And then there's a bunch of chemical compounds that go on. So now when you buy her a gift, it's a quick hit of dopamine, which then makes her feel good physically. While simultaneously making her atrophy emotionally. So now what that does, the emotional void gets bigger and bigger. And then she needs more and more dopamine hits. So now those gifts get bigger and bigger. And your pockets get smaller and smaller. And your bank accounts get smaller and smaller. Or you have to then now climb to the top of the corporate charts. And you have to now grow in a corporation or grow financially which then, again, benefits corporations. And then at the same time, now, as a man, what that does is you end up selling your soul because the more and more you have to gain, if, if it's not coming from your soul, is if it's coming from your soul, is one thing different. So say, if, for instance, you had something that you felt you wanted to do, and you want to create a school for kids that nourishes your soul, your soul and you're getting paid from that. That's one thing. I'm not talking about that. Obviously, that's the way to go. But if you're going and you become a master accountant. Unless that was something that you were came out the womb wanting to do. And honestly, I don't feel that's what happened, because when did God give a fuck about money? So now if you're a master accountant and you are a big million dollar accountant, you have a big business corporation and you're working for, you know, one of these accounting firms and you get up to the top of that, the higher and higher you go, the less and less you have to move from your soul. And when I say that, the reason why I'm saying that is the higher and higher you go, the more and more people are just numbers. The higher you go in a corporation, instead of looking at it from a, you know, hey, there's Bob. I know his I know his family. I go see them at Christmas. You know what I'm saying? 
instead of having that personal relationship with Bob, now you look at Bob as a number because now you have 50 Bobs you have to think about. And if that one is not pulling his numbers, even though it doesn't matter that his grandmother might have been sick or his wife is ill, you know, and that's why he dipped a little bit. Doesn't matter because the numbers ain't moving. So now you have to clip Bob. When in other times you might have felt empathy towards him and said, you know what? He's been with us for years. He had a little dip in his production. Let me, you know, talk to him. Let me figure out why. So the higher and higher you move up in the corporate ladder, the less and less heart you have to have. The less and less empathy you have. Less and less soul you have. So it benefits on both ends because, like I said, the woman becomes a vacuum. The man becomes a vacuum in a different way. Constantly just wanting more and more resources. Not because it makes him feel better on a spiritual level or not because that's his God given purpose. Just because he wants to make sure his genetic code, make sure his genetic information is being passed down. And also because he wants to feel that dopamine hit of being loved, which he's paying for. So in actuality, what's happening is that this was an actuality. What's happening is that they're con They have effectively colonized our emotions. So since they've colonized our emotions, you have to now recolonize your shit. <clears throat> the way you go about that is understanding and diagnosing what the poison is, what the what the ailments are, what the situation is. So now that we understand the situation, and obviously there there are many more layers to it. I'm just using this one layer in this talking point or this conversation that we're having, but there are plenty more layers that contribute to the atrophying of our soul and the colonization of our souls or our emotions or whatever you want to, you know, label you want to put to it. But there are plenty more factors and layers that go into it. I'm just using this as one example. This is part of the situation so now in order for you to recolonize your own soul like i said you have to understand how it's been colonized in the first place now that we understand that like i always say you know you have man and woman not man or woman or man against women it's man and woman You have to understand what the female version of you requires and then be that man. Your emotional side, your feminine side, what would make her happy? What type of man would you have to be to make her happy? Not what type of man you have to play, what type of role, what type of job. Who are you? And what would that be? And then you have to be in sync with yourself. Whatever your female side is, whatever your emotions are, whatever makes you happy end of the day. So you have to figure out what makes you happy and then figure out how to manifest that in this world and turn that into a job. Turn that into your role. You create your own role. So once you create your own role in this world and then you make money off of your role. That means that you have to then personify who you are, what your destiny is, what your purpose is. And once you actually manifest that destiny and then actually manifest it physically, because ultimately that's a feeling, that's a thought, that's something that was downloaded into you from the time you came and you incarnated on this planet. So now you have to then manifest it in this reality. So if you want to help people figure out how that is, how does that look? Wherever that innate feeling in you is, you have to figure out how to manifest it in this 
world and this time and this reality. So if you want to help people, maybe that helping people looks like you being a doctor. Maybe it looks like you being a therapist. Maybe it looks like you being an attorney. Whatever that is, that's for you to figure out. But what I'm saying is that you have to dig inside of you and then bring that out. And the reason why I'm saying that is because now that means you'll be in harmony with yourself. Because no matter if nobody else fuck with you, that means you fuck with you. Because you're doing what you're put here to do. And that exudes from the inside out. You exude confidence and you exude completion and harmony. You exude peace. And there's so many people out here that need peace and looking for peace and harmony. And acceptance. And if you accept yourself by people attaching themselves to you, they'll be able to accept themselves as well. And in that way, you actually have a greater opportunity or chance of meeting the woman who will actually love you conditionally because or sorry, love you unconditionally. Because the thing is that if you love yourself unconditionally, if your masculine and feminine side are in sync. If you are the man that your feminine side would need to have. In order to be in sync with in harmony with yourself, when you actually meet a female, you'll be in sync and harmony and at peace with yourself. That peace will again allow her to have peace. That harmony will allow her to be in harmony with you. And by and because you're in harmony with yourself, she'll have a great opportunity of having unconditional love because the thing is you unconditionally love yourself. And that unconditional love that you have for yourself. Is manifested in what you're doing. You're not a slave. You're not a cog in the wheel. You know what I'm saying? You're not selling your soul for a big corporation. You know what I'm saying? You're actually building your soul and making your soul stronger by what you do. By living in your truth, living in your destiny. You know what I'm saying? And it is our destiny to be and have love unconditionally. That is our destiny. That's why we're here. We're here to learn how to manage energy and to find unconditional love. But this world is not necessarily set up for that. But that's our greatest challenge. And that will be our greatest strength. 